The next question 173 is based on the chapter gravitation in which the increase in potential energy has been demanded. You see a body of mass m is taken from the earth's surface to a height equal to twice the radius r of the earth. If you look at the solution of this thing, you see this was the radius r and from here you have been you know lifting it up to the height you can say that is 2r. You understand? to height equal to twice the radius r of the earth, the change in potential energy has been demanded. So, this is the final situation, this is the initial situation, change in potential energy that means minus g m m by 3 r, this is the final potential energy minus the initial potential energy that is at the surface that is minus of minus again g m m by r, this is the initial, this is the final potential energy. So, that makes it g m m by r and 2 by 3 factor will be because 1 minus 1 by 3 that is 2 by 3 instead of gm in case you replace it by gr square. So, you can do that and that will make it 2 by 3 of mgr understand this is the difference in potential energy and for that matter the most appropriate option will be 2 by 3 mgr for question number 173. Look at next question that is 174. In the next question 174 which is based on Bohr's model of hydrogen atom, they are demanding ratio of longest wavelengths corresponding to Lehmann and Balmer series in hydrogen spectrum. For this particular question you should use Rydberg's formula 1 by lambda that is Rz square 1 by n1 square minus 1 by n2 square. Once they are demanding longest wavelength, that means the energy is minimum. So, if you talk about Liban, then you see it should be that is Rz square. If you want longest wavelength, that means minimum energy. So, jumping will be from 2 to 1. So, this will be 1 by 1 square minus 1 by 2 square. And for Bummer, if you demand the same thing, then it will be longest wavelength means jumping from 3 to 2 that is 1 by 2 square minus 1 by 3 square. So, now if you are dividing these two expressions the maximum wavelength or Lehman to maximum wavelength to Balmer that will be coming out to be 5 by 27 that is the fourth option you will be getting after dividing these two expressions. So, that was the option 4 for question 174. Let us look at next question that is 175. In the next question 175 which is again based on the chapter gravitation, you are expected to find out the gravitational potential at origin. It says that infinite number of bodies each of mass 2 kg are situated on x axis at distances 1 mm, 2 m, 4 m, 8 m respectively from the origin. So, it is a kind of series addition. You see the resulting gravitational potential you are demanding at the origin. So, let us suppose this is the origin, masses are at distance say 1, masses are at 2, masses are at 4 like this you see and it will be resulting up to infinity. So, the gravitational potential that will be minus g m upon 1 by 1 plus 1 by 2 plus 1 by 4 and kind of series you will be having up to infinity. This is something to say minus g m a upon 1 minus r here the common ratio you see that is 1 by 2. So, that makes it minus 2 g m and as you already have the value of mass to be equal to 2 kg. So, that makes it minus 4 g you understand and for that matter the most appropriate answer will be the third one for this particular question 175. Look at next question that is question 176. In the question 176 uh, which is based on the motion of charge particle in combined electric field and magnetic field, you see it says that when a proton is released from rest in a room it starts with an initial acceleration a naught towards west. If it has been released from rest and it is getting accelerated that means definitely electric field is existing in this room and if you look at the electric field 
this is f by q electric field is f by q and for that matter you can say m a not by and whatever is the direction of acceleration that is the direction of force so this will be west so the value of electric field will be like this now see when it is projected towards north with a speed now it you are projecting it with some speed so along with electric field the force of magnetic field will also be coming into picture and they are saying that the it moves with an initial acceleration 3 3 no, a not initially it was a not now it is 3 a not that means the extra 2 a not that is coming due to magnetic field and m into 2 a not this is the force and this is due to f is equal to qvb so this will be the magnitude now only thing you have to ensure is that again you can see the force is acting towards west and the velocity was in upward direction so naturally the magnetic field will be pointing inside that is downward direction so the most appropriate answer under this particular thing will be the first one as it has been shown here for the question 176 let us look at next question that is 177 in this question 177 which is talking about the i lens system they are taking into consideration only two components that is cornea and the i lens they are saying for a normal i the cornea of i provides a converging power of 40 diopter and the least converging power of the i lens behind the cornea is 20 diopter so these two things are in contact of course they are separated by certain liquid but for all practical purposes they are neglecting the effects of other liquids present there it is simply a question of you can say two lenses in contact. So, if you are having two lenses in contact you know that the effective power that gets added up and that is 40 plus 20 that is 60 diopter for that matter if you want focal length that will be 1 meter by 60 is not it because focal length once you are taking in meter then only it is like that and if you calculate this thing that comes out to be 1.67 centimeter approximately for that matter the most appropriate answer will be the second one for the question 177 look at next question that is 178 in the next question 178 which is based on diffraction of electrons you can say Bragg's x-ray diffraction law is there and of course whatever wave optics diffraction pattern is there same sort of thing is available here also it says that a parallel beam of fast moving electrons is incident normally on a narrow slit as it is in Bragg's x-ray diffraction rule a fluorescent screen is placed at a large distance from the slit if the speed of the electrons is increased now you see what is the effect of increasing this speed if you go by de Broglie wavelength if you are increasing the speed a wavelength is getting reduced if you look at the solution of this particular thing then you can say lambda as it is h by mv so lambda is basically decreasing if you are increasing the speed here lambda is decreasing and they are talking about which of the following statement is occurring they are talking about the angular bit if you look at fourth option it is saying diffraction pattern is not observed this is absolutely wrong statement you see you will be observing it and you have to find which of the following first three options now you see they are talking about angular width angular width means it is directly proportional to lambda you can say lambda by aperture that is equal to angular width so if it is reducing that means theta will also be decreasing so the second option will be the most appropriate which is saying that the angular width of the central maximum will decrease this will be the most appropriate option for this particular question 178 look at next question that is question 179 in the next question 179 which is based on electrostatics you see two pit balls carrying equal charges are suspended from a common point by a string of equal length the equilibrium separation between them is r you can see the situation here these two must be charged and they are repelling each other so this side you have a force due to coulombic repulsion and uh, this side you have their weight and for that matter you see this is the angle let's suppose theta i am saying and there is a standard formula you can use here that is electrostatic repulsion that is equal to mg tan theta 
you understand this is the formula based on which you can do this particular exercise. So, in first case you see the force F e that will be proportional to 1 by r square and uh, m g is same in both the cases this tan theta if you see this you can say r by 2 by y this is a kind of first expression you will be having. But in the next case you see they are reducing the length by y by 2 again if you are applying this same expression let us suppose their separation is x now which you are expected to calculate. So, this 1 by x square that becomes proportional to you see tan theta here theta will be this. So, x by 2 upon y by 2. So, that makes it x by y. Now, if you see here you will find that x q you see here x q is becoming proportional here if you look at this y this side. So, x q is becoming proportional to r q by 2 you understand. So, x finally that will be r upon 2 raised to the power 1 by 3. If you divide it, so this proportionality sign can be replaced by this equal to sign here also and that way the most appropriate answer comes out to be the first option for this particular question, question 179. Look at next question that is question 180 that is the last question of this particular codex. Now, this uh, question 180 which is uh, based on motion in a straight line and that too the result which you can say Galileo's law of odd numbers in which it is said that if you are let us suppose you are using the expression say distance covered in nth second that too is applicable. In case you have initial velocity 0 and acceleration constant then it is said that the distance covered in equal time interval is in the ratio 1 is to 3 is to 5. Here you see you have the equal time interval that 2 of 5 seconds. So, the distance covered will be in the ratio 1 is to 3 is to 5. This is a very standard statement which you call Galileo's law of odd numbers. So, if you try to compare you find it something like this h 1 is equal to h 2 by 3 is equal to h 3 by 5. This is the option which is matching your law that is distance covered in equal time interval is in the ratio 1 is to 3 is to 5. So, the most appropriate option for this particular question will be this one which is saying that it covers distances h 1, h 2 and h 3 in the first 5 seconds, the next 5 seconds and the next 5 seconds respectively. So, the time intervals they were taken to be equal whatever may be their values and relation between h 1, h 2, h 3 was supposed to be calculated. So, this is the most appropriate answer for the question 180. And that is all for this discussion of physics question paper NEET 2003. Thank you.